Hello everyone, my name is Lance with Lucky Beer Design. This video is going to be about the Intuicom RTK bridge. Uh, I'm using a bridge M right now. The, the Intuicom modems have two serial ports on them, one for management and one for the correction data out. And so I have connected this computer to both of them. Over here on the right is a putty session just showing the data that's coming out of it for the, the correction data port. And on the left we have the management program which is going to connect to the, the management port which is COM1. So when I click connect there, COM1 on this computer connects to the COM1 on on the modem, or whatever the management one is. And uh, under live status here we've got all the info about the cellular connection, the uh, GGA message about position status from the internal GPS receiver. Uh, assuming that this modem was brand new and you needed to activate it, in this case with Verizon, the first thing you need to do is go into config mode and when it does that it will load some settings about the configuration of the modem. It takes a little bit to load in the software but okay we're there. So the first thing you need to go to here is the connections tab. When you click on that um, you, what you'll need to look at here is the modem status but you have to query the modem status so you click the button and it will report back the current status of the system. Um, things that are interesting, when you call Verizon you'll need to provide them with the, uh, let's see, the ESN here, the 60C. This is my ESN, but you will need to report to them your ESN of your modem to activate it. I'll click this again, I think the registration should say that it's happy. Yep, registered home network. So that's the, that's the sign that it's good and it's online and happy. If the registration says activating or something like that, that means that it's not currently authorized to use the system or it's not working on the Verizon system. So effectively what you have to do is call Verizon, give them the ESN, pay them some money, they will activate the serial number in the system and after that it takes a little bit to get through their system, I think they said half an hour. Uh, you need to come back in here and click the activate modem button which will uh, check what their tower is and see if it's authorized and, and if that's happy I think that takes three or four minutes for the Intuicom to download all the information it needs about the tower network. So once that's all done, then the motor reboots and then you can start to configure it to do things. So assuming that you've done all of that then, you get to come back over here to the Profiles tab and this modem can have up to four different NTRIP profiles. And so for each one of these you have to specify what type of a connection you want. If it's just raw TCP IP, NTRIP1, NTRIP2, or I'm not actually sure what that one is, but it's another option. Choose your uh, server IP address and port number. In this case, this is the Iowa DOT's real-time network. And then your username and password and what baud rate you want the data to be sent from the, the modem to whatever your receiver is. And in the case of using a real-time network where the system requires knowing where you are at in order to send position data for your location, you have to use, you have to send it that position info. So you can choose to use either the internal GPS receiver um, you can type in a static address, static position, I should say. Um, you can get GGA messages from the P2 port from your actual receiver that you're using if you want to, or you can disable it in the case of if you're not using an RTN at all and it's not re required information. In my case, all of our uh, fields that we're going to use are close enough to one tower. I just use a static location and, and forget about it because we're just using the uh, CMR Plus nearest tower solution. We're not using any of the network stuff. Uh, you can set additional configs for profile 2, 3, and 4. So if you have multiple sites or any other reason where you want multiple profiles pre-configured, you can do all of that. When you're all done with all of that, up at the top, um, apply the config to the receiver, which writes it out to firmware, to, well, excuse me, not firmware, but to flash memory so it's permanent, so it stays there even after a reboot. Uh, you can document the config, which means it saves us to a text file, which is good in the future if you need to reference what your latest settings are, if you, you know, forgotten what you would set for which profile. And uh, when you're all done, you just click status mode again, and it says, uh, do you want to, well in my case I didn't save it, so anyway, it's going to lose any of the configs I changed, which I didn't change anything. So what it's going to do though is reboot the receiver, uh, excuse me, it's going to reboot the Intuacom, and once it boots back up, it's going to uh, reconnect to the internet and then start downloading correction data again. So we'll, we'll give this here a minute and see what it does. On the right side you'll eventually see data moving again. 
So this is part of the boot up process. It's looking around on the cell phone network trying to see Verizon Towers, locating them. Searching for towers now, as you see up here. Now it's on the network and happy. It's got a signal strength indicator. Notice on the right side here, this server connection, it says successful connection. And so now data starts moving on the right side. So that's the, uh, the entire configuration software for the Intuicom. It's pretty simple to use and, uh, and it just sort of works. Once you have the thing configured, um, in our case, we were running at the spring and a tractor for planting. And yeah, once the configuration's done, you just kind of forget the modem is in there at all. It just works. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.